style of intro and you want to see more, give it a thumbs up. Hey, how you going? G'day mate, Duran Ryder here from Adelaide, South Australia. We've got the SL7 Tarmac. Let's talk a bit more about it. Let's first of all, numbers matter, all right? Grams matter. We're going to weigh this bad boy. We've got digital scales here. We're going to reset these. The SL7 was bike ridden to win the Flanders just going on. Here we go, zero. We've got a zero set. Hook it through the specialized S-Works titanium toupee saddle. One of my favorite saddles ever. One of my favorite saddles ever. Specialized sell great saddles. Got a number here. 7.2 on the on the on the button. Let's just pull this down here up here. 7.2 grams. Uh, 7.2 kilos rather. 7,200 grams. And the spec is no pedals, full Dura Ace, DT Swiss 350 wheels, lightweight. Uh, Revile carbon rims made in China. We've got a super lightweight stem, a lightweight bar, lighter than stock. It's got lighter spaces, etc. Um, a very, very, you know, expensive $8,000 Aussie for the frame. The seat post, the seat is, is lighter than stock. These are like hardly any padding there at all. Super narrow, hollow titanium rails. Just fair dinkum saddle there. One of my favorites, the toupee. Super light saddle. But 7.2 kilos, no pedals. No pedals, no power meter, no barrel cages. Now let's, as comparison, this is the heaviest Tarmac S-Works of all time, out of the box, right? DI2, SRAM Red, Axis, heavy as ever, right? Show you another bike quickly. And it's another ball white powder. <sighs> Get you going. This is a giant TCR, got this a few weeks back, Facebook Marketplace, it was about 650 Aussie, we've got some you know, got some El Cheapo Durace wheels on there. 10 speed, no pedals, no power meter. You know, just just same same setup as the tarmac. We're gonna weigh it and I'm gonna show you. This is 2009-2010 TCR. So it's a 10, 11, it's a decade old bike, give or take. We're gonna weigh it. It has a toupee saddle in there as well, also titanium rail. We're gonna weigh it. I like using the same sort of each bike. Alright, I'll wait for the beep. Here we go. This is the weight of the bike. 6.7 kilos. So it's almost four, is that right? 460 grams lighter. Lighter. Alright. The seat post on the SL7 and what else would it cost you? You know, a seat and a seat post would cost you more than this whole bike. This is very, very good condition here. Um, I pulled the fork out. There was a recall on these forks, we weren't waiting for Giant Australia to confirm it's like had a ride, blah blah blah. But it just goes to show you, you know, like, this is how bikes should be. And this is not me picking on a specialized, like, you're just a specialized hater, specialized, got your Instagram account deleted. Yes, yeah, true, but no, no, no. I'm a fan of the saddles that specialized sell. I'm a fan of the tire specialized sell. I'm not a fan of these heavy, heavy uh, disc brake bikes that. Specialized are putting out, Giants even putting out, at least Giant they give the customers the option. I'm not sure how long they'll keep that going for, but Specialized, they're saying, nah, you have to ride disc if you want a brand new bike, you know, from us, unless you want to get an LA. And I would say that the LA Elite, strip it down, put a SRAM red group set on there, second hand for two or three hundred bucks, it's going to be lighter than even the Athos, hands down, because it's got, it's got a lighter frame and fork uh, potential, all right? Disc brakes, man, you're adding all that bulk. The wheels are gonna always, the disc brake wheels always gonna be heavier, spec for spec, all right? It's just, you add rotors, you add more spokes, and then you got more flex because you're trying to get light, and then it's just the, 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 the torsional procession doesn't feel as balanced. That's just my experience, you know? A lot of people out there who could, might critique me, like, how many bikes have you ridden? How many bikes do you currently own? How fit are you, you know, like, how many world tour riders are in your DMs or in real life saying, Duran Rider, I agree 100%, don't say anything, but disc brakes suck for us races. You know, for, for cross, cyclocross, gravel, mountain bike, cross country, e-bikes, disc brake, I love it, I love it. But for road, for race, this is all you need. Super lightweight, all right, lean. What's the point of putting all this effort to being lean? <laughs> Hideously lean, disgustingly lean, unattractively lean, and we're gonna make our bike half a kilo heavier 
and it's going to cost us eighteen thousand dollars Aussie or twelve thousand, thirteen thousand US. It's 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 crazy. And Specialized, I would say, have really driven that um, silly fad. You know, I think there should be options for the consumer, and there are options. It's called the second-hand market. But again, you're buying something that's crashed, cracked, bent, or stolen. Only if you're a real bike connoisseur will you be able to discern if the bike's actually safe or not. You know, so. I don't recommend people buy secondhand stuff if you're not experienced, you know, but me, been selling buying bikes for almost two decades and I sort of know what's what. Um, I know what's what's worth. So anyway, that's the deal there. It's crazy, isn't it? That the, the SL7 Tarmac's the most expensive Tarmac ever and it's also the heaviest Tarmac ever. Even if you gave me a 2005 Tarmac, remember that split alloy carbon? I could build that up lighter than any SL7, even the Atheos I could build up lighter than that. And it'd be far, far cheaper and it would ride better. Oh, but it wouldn't be as an aero. Aero frames is absolute, it's a gimmick. It's marketing gimmick. You won't hear this on cycling tips or cycling news or GCN or whatever. And that's fair enough because they're just corporate uh, websites, business. And that's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying when you have an identity out there of, of who you're getting advice from ask yourself what does this person have to benefit from this advice they're giving is this a, a corporate side yeah you've got to promote this product blah 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 and hey I'm, I'll get sponsored stuff and I'll promote stuff but I'm only willing to promote stuff that I actually believe in that I would ride that I think is the very very best for that niche or specific uh, usage I'm not going to shill out and say yeah, yeah this is, this is, I can't do it I couldn't work in a bike shop today that's not me dissing anyone who works in the bike industry. I just couldn't do it because I'm like, where's the options, man? I would get very frustrated. Be OCD. You know, that's why I work for myself. But it is, and the mechanics as well. The mechanics hate working on these road discs. They absolutely hate it. It's like, oh my God. This new SL7, it's like, I wanted to strip the frame down. I'm thinking, oh, i got to bleed the whole brakes. And i got to pull it all through the fork steer. I'm just like, damn, this bike here. I could strip and rip in 30 minutes, strip it down, build it back up, 30 minutes, max an hour, you know? And, and be, it would be easy to work on, and it would get done, it would be like predictable. It's, but yeah, with disc brake, road disc, whew, it's just a faff. It's an unnecessary faff. If you love your road disc, fantastic, right? But if you're out there drinking the Kool-Aid, thinking it's an upgrade, <laughs> you know, if you're a racer and every second matters and you think a road disc's an advantage, it definitely is not. It definitely is not. Today was I was racing some e-bikes up uh, Norton Summit and we had three e-bikes smashing. I was doing like 480 watts at start, just keep up and, and I'm a 6.3 kilo rim brake bike and I'm just thinking, man, I'm glad I'm on my lightweight bike because, you know, it was a very, very fast start. I had to catch the bikes and then, we, and then they saw us and it's just, it's, it's fun, it's good banter. But these special, like the bikes on today the, that I was chasing was the, the Specialized Creo Turbo things. They go pretty quick up the hill. I'm not some anyway. And so I was just thinking, you know, I was just thinking, you know, this is what Specialized are doing. They're bringing out e-bikes. And I'm, I'm a big fan of e-bikes. Huge fan of e-bikes. I'm glad there's e-bikes out there. I'm gl I, I, I was like, yes. I saw the e-bikes down North Summer and I thought, this is going to be a race on. I'm like, yes. I'm a fan of e-bikes. Not if you're a fan of it. Taking Strava segments on your e-bike, but if you're on the e-bike, I'm a fan. I love it. Just pacing, drafting behind, racing. I'm a big fan. So Specialized is bringing out all this new whatever's going to sell. You know, and e-bikes are selling really well. Road discs are selling well because people think it's an upgrade. Because the pros are riding it. And it's like there's zero pros out there. There's zero sponsored Specialized or Giant or whoever athletes out there who would say, yeah, I want a heavier bike. I want a heavier bike. I want a bike that, you know, the wheel changes are slower and you know what I mean? There's no, there's no pro rider out there saying that. Because it's just like, they can't really have an opinion. They're just puppets and pawns, whatever you want to call them. They're spokespeople, they're sponsored athletes, they've got a, a job to do, etc. So be careful whose advice you take as literal, you know? You got Chris Froome the other day saying, disc brakes, yeah, not really a fan. That was pretty cool he did that. Um, but Chris Froome's Chris Froome, he's like the alpha dog, he can sort of say almost what he wants to say, within reason. You know, that's just the rant, that's the rave. Specialized SL7 tarmac. It is the crappest tarmac ever. And I've ridden them all. Literally, I've ridden them all. From 2004, was it? Ridden all the tarmacs. This SL7, it's not even a tarmac. It's like, it's just, it's like a Roubaix disc brake bike. It's just, it's comfortable. It goes downhill cool. 
but it's like it's not a bike I want to race on or flex on or Strava on or you know it's, it's an, a bike I don't even want to ride. What if I scratch it? You know, it's an eight thousand dollar frame. If I get chain suck on it, instantly you're losing money on like they devalue so quick. It's crazy. Walk out the shop, boom, you lose a couple of grand straight away. It's uh, it's crazy. And they bike like this, you know. It's like there's so many deals out there if you know what to look for. Anyway, that's, that's the rant, that's the rave. No hate to specialize. This is, you know, across the board, the giant TCR disc, sluggish as, you know, just like ugh. the, the, you know, the, the Cervelo discs, R5 discs, it's like the S5 disc, it's like, oh my, what is that? Eight point, did you see on the GCN video, 8.14 kilos for Wout Van Aert's Cervelo bike with tubular tires, which are a lot lighter, if you didn't know. Tubular tires are lighter, the wheels are lighter than the clinches. It's crazy. Julian Alaphilippe's SL7, 7.26 kilo on GCN scales. Always people say, no, no, 6.8 kilos out of the box. Add pedals to it. You know what I mean? So anyway, that's the deal there. These bikes are heavier and slower than ever before. It's a disappointment. It's, we're going backwards in tech. You know, we've got shoes like the Nike Next Percent. Best shoe ever. You know, we're going forward with footwear tech, but we're going backwards with bike tech. That's the video. Sign out here. Fair Dinkum opinion. If you appreciate it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like honesty, give it a thumbs down. I'm going to go <laughs> rack up some lines and more nullable white. Go home, have some rice. Chill down. Edit this video. Upload it. We'll see you on the road. And we're going to build up and specialize the layer, I reckon. I'm going to see how light we can get it.